that yes. you're pushing back on everything that we're saying. So what well, we because you're trying to fire me, and I want to work at this company. I'm the CEO of this company. If I'm talking, don't interrupt. I've been trying to get to this point of working on Mr. Reese for a long time. Can I please have a second chance? You were the manager of Dawson or Dogpack 404. I, I was the manager of Dogpack 404 for a time being. If you had to describe the working conditions when Dawson was working with you in ideation uh, with one word, what word would it be? I would say it was depressing. The war crime stuff, that was a joke. Why did you make that joke? Um, Actively right now, by the videos that Dawson is making, he is actively hurting the philanthropy that is helping thousands and millions of lives. Oh, so you want to cheaply manipulate people by imitating content cop? I'll show you imitating content cop. What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hey my bowl of cereal, as most of you have probably guessed by now, this video won't just be about this alleged fraudulent and manipulative asshole, it'll also be about this confirmed fraudulent and manipulative asshole. Dogpack404, also known as Dawson French, and his victims of manipulation. Uh, for the people who have not been exposed to his propaganda yet, Dogpack404 or uh, Dawson French is an ex Mr. Beast employee who uh, worked there for about three weeks and after being fired, made or worked on videos filled with lies about Mr. Beast. And I became suspicious of Dogpack404 uh, after he called me overdramatic for not wanting to spread serious accusations with unsubstantiated substantiated and easily refutable evidence. As well as because he tried to silence me with uh, threats of slander after I started suspecting him of lying. Uh, so in this video I will be debunking close to every accusation uh, he and the people he manipulated have made. But Soggy! But Soggy are you going to place the Mr. Beast Soggy? Are you going to take right the lunchly owning alleged intentionally registered sex offender hiring Mr. Beast Soggy? No, 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 no. See, I think we can all agree that Lunchly, a kind of cringe. Logan Paul, KSI collab, kind of, that's a yikes out of 10, okay? Um, and the fucking mold situation, that is disgustingly messed up and I'm never eating that shit in my life. Uh, but that doesn't mean that just because this spiteful, vengeful ghoul accuses Mr. Beast of intentionally hiring a registered sex offender, that he actually did. Yeah, let's talk about the lies spun by Dogpack and Jake Weddle, that Mr. Beast knowingly hired a registered sex offender and while working at the company would refer to him by covert code name Delaware because of the crimes he committed there and as a result is not allowed to go back into the state of Delaware and that Mr. Beast higher ups are using that nickname because they enjoy messed up insider jokes like that. When I was there they called him Delaware. It's like, why, 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 do you, why do you call him Delaware? I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. That's his nickname? Colloquially? Like, you know, yeah, it's Delaware, don't ask him why, yeah. You know that he knew and because he'll be in videos and whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Uh, which, uh, just saying that out loud makes it sound like a contrived side plot in a badly written Netflix series. Since state banishments are extremely rare. Uh, most recent one I found was uh, a one year Kentucky banishment in the year 2000. Luckily, the real story is much more boring. See, according to a non- Anonymous Mr. Beast employee Dustin Harris, who has been working at Mr. Beast for about six years and went rogue because he couldn't stand Jimmy not responding to all of the misinformation being spread about 
not just Jimmy or the Mr. Beast company, but also about his own friends and colleagues. Well, he explained that Delaware was once a store manager at Jimmy's local Best Buy, which for the people who don't know Best Buy, is a $20 billion valued electronics retailer company with stores all over the US. I mean that when Jimmy was 19 and first started blowing up on YouTube, Jimmy realized he needed employees to improve his content. So as a dumbass impulsive 19 year old randomly thrown into fame, he went to his local Best Buy and asked its employees if they wanted to work for it. Naively thinking that a multi-billion dollar company would have at least made sure to not hire criminals and especially to not hire a registered sex offender as store manager, 19 year old Mr. Beast didn't do background checks. Um, was that stupid? Yes. Is Delaware a piece of shit? Yes. Should Jimmy take responsibility for making that mistake? Yes. But it wasn't this fucked up master plan by Jimmy to intentionally hire an RSO. It was a dumb mistake by an inexperienced adolescent starting up a business. And you don't need to take mine or Dustin's word for it. If someone did but a shred of research, you'd find the still publicly available almost 7 year old video on the Mr. Beast channel where you can see Delaware as the Best Buy store manager before he was hired at Mr. Beast. And guess what nickname was embroidered on his Best Buy uniform? Delaware. Wow. Well, that was hard investigative research. They called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. You know that he knew and because he'll be in videos. And whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. And whenever he, he, he is, He's wearing a mask. He's wearing a mask. And um, for the people thinking that he still works at Mr. Beast, no, he was fired over half a decade ago. Now, Dogpack, uh, before you say something along the lines of, uh, what about the recording we showed from a real Mr. Beast employee talking about Delaware? Uh, do you really want me to go into detail about how you and your cronies tricked an employee into saying what you wanted him to say? To support your lies and then you guys recording him and using that recording without his consent? Okay. Uh, hi, Garrett. Can you tell me a bit about how long you worked at Mr. Beast? Um, I was at Mr. Beast from around 2017 to 2021. So you've worked there for five years and could be seen as a credible ex-employee. Yep. You're the person who we can hear talk about Delaware in the recording uh, Dawson or Dogback 404 shows in his video. Uh, can you tell me a bit about how that happened? Yeah. Um... It was not to my knowledge that I was being recorded at all. Um, you know, I have a friend who, you know, I, I worked with plenty of times outside of Mr. Beast. I uh, just thought it was just like a normal call, just checking up on him um, and checking up on me. And, you know, when two people speak about old places, you know, there's drama, there's gossip, there's catching up, there's, you know, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. And then the next thing you know, two weeks later, Dog Pack releases like a 12 million view video where, you know, I just have a really crappy voice changer over my voice. And if you know me, like, you know, you know, it's me. So was the entire call basically just rumors you were talking about with a friend? Yeah, I just, I, it's just a friend. We're just shooting this shit. And, you know, I don't, we're just gossiping a lot, catching up on, you know, the, the current drama. Like, it's just, it, it, it not, nothing crazy. Like, like nothing you said had any actual facts behind it as they try to construe in their video no I, I don't you know i don't i don't think any of the stuff that we we're talking about really had any facts or like evidence it was just water cooler talk would you say them uh, using the call recording uh, unconsensually in their video has damaged you or your life in any way yeah yeah unfortunately to say that it hasn't hurt me financially would be just a lie you know mentally it's hurt me as well i mean i was manic and crazy for about a month month and a half trying to just watch relationships like fall through my fingers you know i lost someone that like was pretty close to me as well you know it just, it just wasn't it wasn't a good scene so financially and mentally it really messed me up do you feel in any way like tricked deceived or used i mean yeah <laughs> to say that i felt trick or use is an understatement like they not only came and did this you know, I had like three or four contacts call me the night that it dropped and I was watching the whole video trying to figure out like 
what they were talking about. And when it got to that recording, my stomach just like sank. All because of a call that they unconsensually recorded, um, which you clarified was basically rumors and gossip. Yeah. I didn't want to be involved with, didn't even know what was going on that, you know, I was just thrown into unconsensually. And yeah, you said it, man. I just did. <laughs> it, it threw a pretty big wall up in the progress of my life. And I didn't feel like that was needed and uh, pretty upset. But then uh, what about Jake the Viking's tweet about Jimmy's mom literally allowing her then barely of age son to knowingly be in contact with and hire a pedophile? Uh, first of all, have you thought about just how fucking absurd that sounds? And second, uh, Jake the Viking is a shitty person and untrustworthy. Even Dogpack's friends agree on that. Viking is not a good guy, and that's just an opinion based on his actions in my eyeballs. Uh wow, Dogpack and Jake Weddle falsely implying a Mr. Beast intentionally hired a registered sex offender and created a nickname to joke about it within the company to then try back up their baseless claims by tricking an employee and recording him without consent? That's pretty messed up, Soggy. Yahoo! That'd be as shameless as falsely accusing someone of committing war crimes against the Geneva Convention in a consented to solitary confinement challenge where you'd earn $10,000 a day and can quit whenever you want and still keep the accumulated prize money up until that point. During a time where we have multiple countries actively at war in the world with millions of people suffering because of it. Oh, wait. And I go up to my friend, my, my, my good friend. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. Oh, oh good. 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. You know what, let's ask Dustin about that, because uh, ironically enough, Dustin is the good friend of Jake Weddle who made those war crime comments. And I can prove it with Jake Weddle's own words. One of my, my dear, dear friends who I believe I lost the same guy who did the war crime joke, which turned out to not be a joke. Uh, he got injured uh, at Mr. Beast, that's because of Viking. On that shoot, everybody else had to stay behind and clean up. And Viking said, fuck that, let's just throw all of this over the side of the mountain, like littering in a national park. And my good dear friend, who I kept saying was one of the good people over there, said, you're not gonna do that, I'm not gonna let you do that. And Viking said, watch me, and he did it. But my friend gathered up all the stuff he could to make sure there was just that much less litter. And that's a really good thing to do. He carried everything he could down the mountain, and he broke his ankle. They said, yeah, you were carrying too much stuff, right? Yes, yes he was because that guy's a saint. And blame me for our friend Dustin. I'll, I'll use names, I'm like you. Um, our friend Dustin falling and breaking his leg. Or not his leg, yeah, his ankle, I'm sorry. Falling and breaking his ankle. Now, why would someone who Jake Weddle himself, uh, who is clearly against Mr. Beast, uh, describes as one of the best people he has ever known, who literally broke his ankle trying to prevent littering, and in Jake's own words, is a saint? Because that guy's a saint. Go rogue to try and correct defamatory statements made against Jimmy if Jimmy committed war crimes. The war crime stuff was 100% a joke, I'm now a producer, but I was originally hired as comedy writer with Jake Weddle, so I just wanted to cheer him up with a dumb and edgy joke. Oh, uh, so it was a joke. Dustin actually did say the war crime stuff as a, as a joke. Okay, that makes sense, uh, because in a follow-up video of Jake Weddle's uh, and Dogpack's interview, Jake Weddle seems to uh, slip up saying it was a joke. The same guy who did war crime joke. Before quickly correcting himself. Which turned out to not be a joke. And his videos are pretty unedited, so uh, he might have just accidentally let it slip through the cracks. And just to be clear, I'll show the clip of Dogpack's 13 million viewed video again, in which Jake and Dogpack clearly insinuated it wasn't a joke. And I go up to my friend, my, 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 my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. Oh, oh good. 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. It's a really big allegation to say that like, Mr. Beast took away your agency and in a sense kind of like forced you into doing this. But um, yeah, no, yeah, we I, I agree. That is very serious. That's why I alleged it. That's why I alleged it. And the viewers clearly didn't think it was a joke either. Uh, but just as I will rip into Jimmy later in this video, I'll also investigate Jake Weddle's story in more detail later in this video. Because in between him falsely accusing Jimmy of intentionally hiring an RSO and comparing himself consensually agreeing to doing a challenge for $10,000 a day, being allowed to leave whenever he wants uh, to rip victims 
and victims of war crimes, even though he knew that was a joke. The same guy who did war crime joke. As well as spreading fake AI generated incriminating voice recordings of Mr. Beast. <laughs> That's right. I got that sent to me, and you know what? That was AI. Maybe say that before playing the recording because you worked at Mr. Beast and you know how people will just watch the recording and then click off of the video without ever hearing your disclaimer that it was AI generated. Oh, but then you wouldn't get as much money from views because this AI generated disinformation video is the one that got your channel monetized. That's my brand, is being honest and crying a lot. And then after making those slanderous claims, except another $50,000 from Jimmy with no strings attached, there's a lot more to be said about him. That's my brand, is being honest and crying a lot. And about how Dogback manipulated him. But let's first continue with all of the lies and manipulation of Dogback 404. Now, for the visual learners watching, you'll see that I have behind me a wall. And this wall features most of Dogback 404's accusations. And I say most, because at this point there are just so many that I might have forgotten a few. And every time I disprove one of his accusations, it'll be crossed through with red marker. Every time I prove one to be uncertain, I'll add a blue question mark to it. And every time an accusation Dogpack made is true, I'll add a green check mark to it. And I know that you, and I, and everyone else wants to know about the illegal lotteries. Did Mr. Beast really commit three malicious and predatory illegal lotteries as get rich quick scheme? Well, I will talk about them throughout my video in between all of the other accusations, starting right now with the alleged illegal lottery number three claim of Dogpack 404. Or should I say doctoring up evidence to make a more convincing claims you knew to be untrue, Pack 404. Yeah, Dawson, I'm the first one who noticed. See, for the third, illegal lottery by sure to be in a video live stream. Dogpack claims they only informed people on the website that no purchase was necessary. But uh, did you read the description? You know, the description which I got via the Wayback Machine, where it literally says free entry available on site? Oh, but wait, you never actually found the description of that video, did you? You just made it look that way by doctoring up this fake YouTube UI. So you'd be more convincing and it'd look as if you had access to the original video and description. So people would more easily believe you. Uh, but I want you, uh, the viewer, to closely compare these two layouts. This one is a UI when he talks about the buy a shirt to be in my video live stream. And this one is the actual current YouTube UI you see whenever Dogpack shows a screen recording of public videos you can still watch. And when putting the two side by side, you can see that the UI for the illegal live stream is not the real YouTube UI. Instead of rounded corners, they're sharp, the likes are gone, the upload date is in a completely wrong spot where it has never been, and the button sizes and title font just seem... off. And no, it's not because he found an older YouTube UI via the Wayback Machine like I did, because they don't hide likes and YouTube has never had this exact UI. Sure, it had sharp corners once, but not in combination with these exact other UI elements. Well, you want to know the funniest part? Even the re-uploaded version that Dogpack found and then added a manipulative fake YouTube UI to actually had copied the original live stream's description. So, even in the re-upload he found, it says that there's a free entry option. Yet he still doctored up this fake UI to make his intentional lies more convincing. Nah, I'm just kidding. Funniest part is that Mr. Beast verbally says it on stream. Go to shopmrbeast.com, buy the shirt or hoodie, you could be one of the people that come down and compete in the video. There's also a free entry on the site as well, if you just- A hundred of which are gonna be picked from, uh, you know, people that buy this shirt or hoodie, or if you enter for free on the site as well, it's, uh, it, that's an option as well. So, oh my God, you're so sneaky. Now, when someone is prepared to dog up evidence to make potentially incriminating lies more convincing, it automatically puts every single one of their accusations that isn't bulletproof into question. So, 
Throughout this video, you'll also see that there are multiple examples of him leaving out crucial details from evidence that would easily disprove the accusations he's making. Because Dawson loves framing things deceitfully to push his personal agenda. Shopify dashboard. We just have like a, a random number generator and then like we just put the na number, like if there's a thousand orders, we just put it, picks number between one and thousand, and then my people give me the name. Wait a second! Mr. Beast is only picking out of the Shopify list? Well, does that mean he's only giving away to paid entries after all? No. You can be part of a Shopify giveaway without having to make any purchase whatsoever. These are some generic examples of how to enter Shopify giveaways for free on the official Shopify website. Mr. Beast scamming someone out of a lifetime of dog food and then tried silencing the so-called victim on Reddit? As far as fake giveaways go, I'm sort of limited in what I can say without exposing confidential information and getting sued. So my official statement is that sometimes things slip through the cracks and Personally, I believe that is intentional. Here's one example where someone on Reddit posted saying that they were promised free dog food for life in exchange for letting Mr. Beast use them in a video. Five months later, they still haven't received their dog food. I actually sent this post to someone who works at Mr. Beast and they said they were gonna send it to the PR team and then the Reddit post got taken down. So I don't know if it got resolved. Not true. Here is a message from the Reddit user stating Mr. Beast did reach out to them as well as everyone else. Uh, apparently this user just hadn't noticed at first because the Mr. Beast company's email went to the user's spam folder. The issue got resolved and then the Reddit post got deleted. Sometimes things slip through the cracks and personally I believe that is intentional. Oh, the new Feasibles formula has more sugar and calories than Hershey's? Mr. Beast changed the formula again to where it has mostly the same ingredients as Hershey's and even more sugar and more calories per bar. Well, that'd be pretty messed up after Mr. Beast actively advertised his chocolate to be healthier than Hershey's. Luckily, it's just another lie. Dogpack is being deceitful here because he's comparing a single serving size 43 grams Hershey's bar to a two serving size 60 grams Feastables bar instead of comparing it to a one serving size 35 grams Feastables bar. Well, if you recalculate the ingredients of both to 43 grams, then you'll see that Feastable still has less sugar than Hershey's and actually has less calories than the previous formula. This pit is fake. No, it's not. Here's footage of them digging the pits. You know what? Here's a crew member's footage of the two non-CGI buses and non-CGI train being in the pits after they drove them in there. Shredder is CGI. Nope. At this timestamp, they do shred an actual Lamborghini in a legitimate shredder. Uh, but I will say that when they use CGI, it looks fucking terrible as if it came straight out of a CW show. This car is digitally lifted. This car isn't digitally lifted. However, they did change the original red coloring to blue to make a visual distinction between the first rocket car they launched and failed which was red and the second one they launched which succeeded but was also red because they were scared that both cars being red might confuse the audience so in post they just changed the second one's color to blue but there was no digital lift God! what you're saying the things that you're saying are truly in good faith and that you're not a you're not a disgruntled employee you can watch my video and like view it through the lens of Oh, this guy's just a disgruntled employee. But the evidence still speaks for itself. Of course. But the evidence still speaks for itself. Of course. This accusation of Dogpack 404 actually upset this engineering YouTuber who passionately worked on that rocket car for months to get it working just to have this goober claim that it's faked. But Dawson doesn't care about collateral damage done to others. He doesn't mind throwing people in front of non-CGI buses to push his own agenda. He did it with the rocket car YouTuber. He did it with that tricked employee's phone recording they showed without his consent. He tried doing it with me by calling me overdramatic, pressuring me into making a video accusing Mr. Beast with uncertain and refutable evidence, which by now I know to be untrue, which he doubled down on by the way. Every other commentary YouTuber did it without getting sued. Even though just because a lot of YouTubers tried milking the situation and threw unsubstantiated, easily disprovable accusations out there for clout, views and money without getting sued, doesn't make it an okay thing to do, dogpack. Or do you think it's acceptable to make false CP allegations? Which, maybe I should talk about that for a second. See, in a recent video on Rosanna Pence channel, Dogpack404 claimed to have access to leaked work chat messages, with uh, one of them being Ava Christison distributing alleged CP of Ivanka Trump. Except 
Dogpack doesn't always use the term alleged. Yeah, this is the most disgusting one by far. Well, actually, the CP was probably more disgusting. And he also probably admitted to having downloaded that uncensored alleged CP uh, on a now deleted community post and admits to having reverse image searched what he thought was CP in the video. Obviously, Dawson French himself was called out for owning and reverse image searching uh, what he believed was fucking CP because that is weird and a crime of CP are not protected under First Amendment rights and are illegal contraband under federal law. Legal definition of sexually explicit conduct does not require that an image depict a child engaging in a sexual activity. A picture of a naked child may constitute illegal CP. Uh, so he deleted that community post to then lie about never having had the uncensored CP on someone else's YouTube video. Funny thing is that it only took one hour for people to find this tweet about that exact picture of 18 year old Ivanka Trump being in a GQ magazine. It legitimately took one hour, one hour to not falsely accuse someone of distributing CP. It's like he constantly lies to get himself out of trouble and only when he's run out of lies and in face of a serious trouble and he's run out of options does he reveal the truth. Then he tries to pull the lol I said allegedly thing again. I said as Ava alleges. I said in my opinion. I said may. I said if. Yeah, this is the most disgusting one by far. Well, actually, the CP was probably more disgusting. But uh, so either Dogback knew that it wasn't CP and made those false accusations anyways, or he's just a f***ing idiot who can't even use Google. But that wasn't the only lie in that video, was it, Dawson? This isn't a work chat. This is just a small snapshot of a company chat, but it's, I think, one of many. I've heard that there's other company chats that they communicate on. Yes. And um, it wasn't a work chat. Uh, it was created as an NSFW meme chat by already known degenerate Ava Chris Tyson. There's even examples of uh, Ava getting mad whenever anyone talks about anything work related. Me is this is just a small snapshot of a company chat, small snapshot of a company chat. What you're saying, the things that you're saying are truly in good faith and that you're not a, you're not a disgruntled employee. You can watch my video and like view it through the lens of, oh, this guy's just a disgruntled employee, but the evidence still speaks for itself. Of course. However, at one point it was changed to a work chat by Ava, at which point she also kicked everyone unrelated out of there. Uh, but then the chat instantly died because obviously no one else, including Jimmy, wanted to use it as a work chat. Now, I will say that even though this image is confirmed not to be CP, uh, Ava did seem to think it was at the time, and so this proves that she is even worse than we thought and, and is a disgusting individual. However, the way Dogpack tried distributing what he believes was a picture of a sexually abused child to thousands of possibly child viewers wasn't to inform people of degenerate Ava Chris Tyson, uh, but instead was to push his own agenda, framing Mr. Beast into allegedly knowing that Ava was a confirmed pedophile. Uh, it's so disgusting. See, I say framing because if you look at all of the messages around that image, it's a huge rant from not just Ava, but other people as well, about pedophiles exposed by the hacker group Anonymous in this Twitter thread she linked with that picture of Ivanka Trump, uh, because it was in that Twitter thread, um, as well as a rant about Jeffrey Epstein and billionaire pedos. And I don't think context matters here on Ava Tyson's side. I still think this is fucking disgusting. However, I do think context matters for the people perceiving Ava Chris Tyson's messages. I'm sorry, but if I'd see my friends actively ranting about files and bashing them, I'd actively be convinced to not think they're a file when they send degenerate memes like this. I just cringe on the inside while thinking that they have a degenerate sense of Zoomer humor. Even Trey Yates, uh, the person who leaked the work chat to Dogpack and Rosanna, refers to those memes as a weird thing Ava found funny in the past instead of confirmed file messages. A lot of the edgy type of content and a lot of the, um, uh, you know, edgy cringe or humor started with Ava. Um, like she sent a bunch of messages um, that probably shouldn't have been sent in a work group chat. Um, just because she thought it was funny at the time. So even he, who actively dislikes Mr. Beast, 
didn't even notice. So with all this evidence, I think it's definitely fair to say that Jimmy knew about Ava Tyson's behavior. Pisagi, uh, Rosanna Pensino, and Dogback 404 reported Jimmy Beast to the FBI, so so he's gotta be a pedophile. <laughs> I think people vastly underestimate just how easy you can report someone to the FBI. Even as a non-American citizen myself, I just created this entire form of Rosanna Pensino and Dawson French aka Dogpack404 distributing CP in two minutes on tips.fbi.gov which I will now submit to the FBI. Soggy Serial reported Rosanna Pensino and Dawson French to the FBI? Holy shit, they've gotta be guilty now! See what I did there? Um, also, I didn't submit this because unlike two other creators, I'd rather not waste the FBI's time uh, from finding actual CP distributors to push a selfish, manipulative and personal agenda. And manipulating Rosanna Pensino so you could use her bigger channel to spread this disinformation is so vile. Look, I knew you were Betty Dawson. Uh, but I never expected you to stoop this low. He also tried dragging the famous anime Higehiro uh, and its fandom through the mud by saying it's about a 26 year old having a romantic relationship with a minor. Let's see if Jimmy knew about Ava's uh, concerning behavior. June of 2021, he sends a message of an anime called Higehiro or Higehiro. It says, I bet Chris would love this show. Why? What's this show about? Well, it's interesting that you ask because this show is about a romantic relationship between a 26 year old salary man and a 17 year old high school runaway. So Jimmy in the chat is saying, I bet Chris would love this show because it's yeah. right up her alley. Why do you think Chris would love that show, Jimmy? And Mr. B saying Ava would love this? Uh, even though the anime is about the exact opposite. He posted that one thing about the anime with the like adult getting into a relationship with a. That's girl. okay. Okay, here. Here's the thing. That's a lie. That is such a bullshit lie. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. He literally said, "No, no, 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 no." He literally said, "The context, the con, the con." No, the context of that anime, that show is about a 26-year-old guy. Okay, he takes in this runaway girl who is selling herself to prostitution. She's like 17 or whatever, 16. I don't remember. She's 17, 16. She is selling her body because she ran away from home because some other shit happened. And I remember this because my friend tried showing this to me. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? It turned out it was actually a very wholesome show about this dude kind of teaching her like how to get through like all this trauma that she had in her life. There was no never any romantic intentions there. Sure, if you watch the anime in the first episode, the girl was coming on to him, but the guy rejected her and saw her as a daughter. That whole show, he had a whole nother love interest in that show this whole time this was never about the dude getting into a sexual relationship with a 17 year old you guys actively pissed off the entire anime side of twitter with this one so this again more so proves jimmy didn't know so with all this evidence i think it's definitely fair to say that jimmy knew about ava tyson's behavior Do you wanna know the worst of all dogback and rosanna used what they thought was a cp picture as clickbait for their fucking thumbnail. They even AB tested three versions of it. You know, just trying to get some more views by putting alleged CP in your quirky thumbnails. Will the allegedly abused child garner more views with the red background or the pink background? Following their logic, they are now both confirmed files and should have 100% known that of one another. I, I can't, dude. I can't. And this video where they do all this, a dog pack dares to try and invalidate my past accusations uh, that his video IDs he came up with while working at Mr. Beast were weirding and creeping employees out. I suggested a video for breast cancer awareness about buying a thousand boobs so, like maybe not the most professional way to phrase it you know it's a little clickbaity or whatever but, like the actual yeah. video is supposed to be paying for mastectomies and cosmetic surgeries for breast cancer survivors that's amazing that's yeah. wonderful yeah, yeah. with a thumbnail and title like these oh wait uh if this wasn't supposed to be creepy or weird then why did you make sure to blur the title and thumbnail when showing it on screen? Don't be shy, I still got the sharp version. Oh, was it because four objectified headless pairs of boobs with the Mr. Beast clickbait face and the title I bought 1000 boobs wasn't in line with your I'm not a weird creep agenda you were trying to push? Yeah, this um, 
It's about cancer awareness message seems more like you realizing your manager didn't think that joke objectifying women was uh, funny. And you're then desperately trying to save your own skin by, uh, you know, using cancer. Especially when you also sent in uh, these work IDs such as Baby Battle Royale with uh, babies carrying assault rifles. Or Mr. Beast does every drug challenge. Were those uh, also for Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Also, didn't you say that Mr. Beast is mainly targeted toward kids? Encouraging like almost children simping for these people. I would say he's gained most of his audience since then and his content's only gotten younger. Now, Mr. Beast intentionally manipulates these children's vulnerable minds what happened to that claim? Look, I expected them at the end of the video to say that it was some twisted parody. But uh, nope. They seem pretty proud of their slanderous content where they admitted to committing multiple alleged federal crimes. So uh, same time next week? But his collateral damage doesn't end with uh, allegedly abused children. He also uses old people. For example, he tried using contestant 58 from the ages 1 to 100 video by claiming that he didn't really wink. In this video, this wink was added in post. And that number 58 didn't hear number 42 getting out of the booth. In fact, 58 was actually on the far opposite side of the room from 42 and he just didn't hear him. And because of that, number 58, a 58 year old man, was so confused and getting harassed online to the point he felt that he had to make a TikTok about it. Hey guys, Mr. 58. Been a while since I've posted anything, but something's really been concerning me a little bit. Uh, I've been seeing things on the internet that have said I didn't wink in the Mr. Beast video 1 to 100. Um, I did wink. I winked a, a few times as a matter of fact. Uh, the other thing that's been said is I I didn't hear 42 say he was stepping out of his cube. Yes, I heard 42 say he was stepping out of his cube. I did it on my own accord to step out with two seconds left on the clock. I know of nothing in that video that was staged whatsoever. And I don't know why these rumors are going over the internet that these things didn't happen. Everything that I did, I did in that video and nothing was edited after the fact. Everybody be good and have a great day. This is just, this is just sad. I actually got mad seeing this old sweet guy get so upset and what was dogpacks proof for these claims well i've got to preview the 1 to 100 video once so now you've got to believe every baseless claim i make around it because you're so trustworthy dawson uh, i'd rather believe the sweet old guy who literally was in the video everybody be good and have a great day he did it with Mark Bates, a random subscriber contestant. I subscribed to Mr. Beast and literally won a million dollars. I literally was in this video right here and all I did was subscribe. I had no relationship with Mr. Beast or anything like that. And they flew me down to North Carolina. I live in Cleveland and changed my life forever. Literally. All I did was subscribe. Who won one million dollars and then made a video after winning that prize. Which Dogbag just took a very out of context clip from. Another example of things slipping through the cracks. The second thing that I probably would do different is invest. I talked to Jimmy uh, when I, after I won a million dollars, after I finally like got the remaining amount in my bank account. I was telling him, I was like, man, I don't want to fail. I don't want to be like how everybody's saying, like I'm gonna run out of money and do all this crazy stuff. I was like, man, Jimmy, please help me. And he said he was gonna help me and trying to, and we was gonna invest, but yeah, that didn't happen, so. Oh no, he didn't invest for Mark. Oh wait, uh, what's this clip right after? Which Dogpack conveniently didn't put in his video? Invest, but yeah, that didn't happen, so. Yeah, and let me do clarify, Jimmy did help me. Cause I, I know, like I said, I know y'all be like, Oh, he didn't help him, you know. He did help me financially, but like giving me money for, he did give me funds. Oh, so uh, uh, Mr. B still funded Mark even after winning and spending the $1 million? Okay. Uh, apparently they just had him on a monthly salary at the Mr. Beast company without him having to perform any work there. Well, this guy's a victim. Mark paid himself was so fucking frustrated from Dogpack using this out of context clip to push his personal agenda that he made two more videos speaking out against all of the DMs he was getting from Dogpack's followers. Channel everywhere. You guys been saying that I'm a victim of Mr. Beast 
mentioned that he didn't help me. Uh, you've been talking about everything. It's not my story. So I really wanted to get up here and tell you guys that Mr. Beast really did come through for me, Jimmy. I love you. Dogbag doesn't give a shit about who or what he uses or whose life he ruins just to push his own narrative and it's fucking disgusting. <sighs> Showing out of context clips and snippets is something that Dogbag does a lot, by the way. He also did it with Mac when uh, Mr. Beast asked him what he was gonna do with the $800,000 he won. What are you gonna spend the $800,000 on? I've got three friends of mine, childhood friends of mine, and they don't have a lot of money. I'm gonna make sure they don't have to worry about money anymore. I mean, my life's changed now. Oh, wow. He's gonna give it to his three less fortunate friends? Well, that is so kind. Let's see what Dawson made of this. Bathrooms. What are you gonna spend the $800,000 on? I mean, my life's changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that $800,000 is really gonna change your life. Oh, he cut that, that whole part out to insinuate Mac was gonna spend it on more bathrooms in his huge mansion that he didn't even have. Mac started working full time on the editing team at Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million dollar mansion. His 6,000 square foot million dollar mansion comes with a movie theater and seven bathrooms. See, I saw the actual property listing and, well, obviously I can't show this, so you've got to trust me on my word. But the house is on the name of another editor at Mr. Beast, which Mac was sleeping over at because he himself didn't have a house. But Saugi, didn't you expose Mac for being a liar? Why are you now picking his side? I don't pick sides, nor do I just blindly hate every person I criticize. What am I? A disgruntled employee acting like a toddler? Mac left Iraq after all. And by the way, I've never seen Mac try and use fake CP to push a personal agenda. Also, Dogpack. Take that clip from my video out of yours. Cause now you're using my content to push your lies. So over the next seven days, I'm gonna be giving a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S24. How Dark is this legal? I don't get it. All you have to do is subscribe to your channel. All you have to do to enter to win one of these phones is subscribe. It's a scam. Holy shit. The Samsung giveaway was legit. Here you can see old testimonies from random subscribers who won and got contacted by Mr. Beast. Also, PewDiePie never bashed that clip. It's just another example of Dogpack's manipulative editing. Now, even though we've only touched the tip of the uh, lies of Dogpack iceberg so far, I preemptively want to ask Dawson, um, why would you knowingly spread all of this disinformation? Now, Dogpack, something you really shouldn't say because it would make you look real dumb, um, is either he mentioned the fact that he is not a professional journalist or investigator just a guy throwing allegations around for other people to properly investigate as you did in a desperate attempt to save the little credibility you had left after falsely accusing someone of domestic violence and kicking their dog in your third video uh, because this is what you said in your first video which I'm also disproving and I don't want to put a lot of like hearsay into this video you should just believe the receipts that I'm showing you and not what I'm saying. Well, I've looked at the receipts, Dawson, and um, so far they're telling me that you're a lying asshole. And before you try and defend yourself with plausible deniability, I'll just play this clip. Mr. Beast knows this, but you know, he's a, he's a poker player. He likes a little bluffery, a little plausible deniability. Also, me disproving cheap attempts at slander from this guy doesn't mean I'm defending this guy. I know a lot of people believe in the delusion that uh, defending Mr. Beast is the safe option. Um, I know these people have been living under a rock lately, but uh, defending Mr. Beast right now is actual career suicide. While regurgitating Dogpack's lies is the easy and safe way to generate millions of views and hundreds of thousands of dollars. But in my opinion, blindly taking either side should be heavily frowned upon because there are some very questionable and fucked up decisions Mr. Beast has made that he needs to be held accountable for. And I'll get to that. However, to effectively criticize him, help genuine victims, and hold them morally and legally accountable, we must first clear the table of all of the lies that have been spread by Dawson French, aka Dogpack404, such as the lie of feasibles using child slavery. It takes a single Google search to find several public articles to prove that from October 2023, the same time when they took their slave free banner off of the feasibles website, they've been in talks to join Tony Chocoloni's open chain ethical sourcing initiative, and did so officially from March 2024. Which of you don't know, Tony Chocolonis is a Dutch chocolate brand known for their goal to produce chocolate as ethically as possible and one of few companies 
legitimately doing so. I mean, now Feastables is the first major US-based company who joined them with the goal to actively reduce child labor and slavery in the chocolate production process. But then, why they take slavery banner off of Feastables website? Uh, well, dear dogpack, already typing that question up on Twitter, you can literally read the answer on the Tony Chocoloni's website. Why did you make the switch from slavery to exploitation free? We've adapted our mission messaging to help us express the scope of impact work we do today. When Tony started, we were laser focused on one issue in the cocoa industry but as we've grown our areas of impact have grown too our mission statement needs to be inclusive of all the work we do today from addressing multi-dimensional poverty to remediating child labor and everything in between Wow, it took one Google search to not falsely accuse someone of using child slavery? Yes. For the people who don't know, Dogpack did falsely accuse someone of DV and AB. Young Mr. Beast, Dogpack 404, put out his third video, Mr. Beast's Secret CEO, in which he was later proven to have accused an innocent man, James Warren, Mr. Beast's cousin, of domestic violence. He later admitted this on Twitter after his own source disproved him and he looked into it himself, only to find out he accused the wrong guy. But that slander's video is still up by the way after more than a month of people begging him to take it down. A uh, disclaimer, he took it down a few days ago but after almost 2 months and 3.1 million views you're not getting off the hook that easily Dawson. And the video of the false CP allegations is also still up. He also made live ruining allegations against Lokoya Hill who was the person that made the decision to fire Dogpack. Here's an audio clip from the leaked firing interview at Beast. Hey, um, I'm a boy, I'm our CEO. Part of my job is that yes. you're pushing back on everything that we're saying. So what well, we because you're trying to fire me, and I want to work at this company. I'm the CEO of this company. If I'm talking, don't interrupt me. And I am telling you this is what's happening, and you're telling me that I'm wrong. I am not wrong. I've made the decision. I'm here, we will take care of. I appreciate that. Can I, can I please have a second chance? It's not. Happening. Just I'm, if I'm getting paid, just let me come in and let me try to be coachable. If Hoodie changes his mind, can I? I've been trying to get to this point of working on Mr. Reese for a long time. Hmm, I wonder why he's trying to destroy Lokoya's life. I think there are other people at the company. If I were to switch departments, that would be very happy to have me. I don't care about the salary. It's not, no, it's not gonna happen to you. Or Doc Scara. She's your hiring manager. Or put a picture of his manager on his psychotic wall for no reason but personal spite. Hmm, coincidentally, all three of those people were in the room when Dogpack was fired. I'm a boy, I'm our CEO. Car, we are still going to reimburse you. This is the original contract and the original NDA. And so it's like he's just doing all this out of a personal grudge. Yes. We will lie if we yeah. have to. I mean, of course. I just try to be honest i guess what is selfless hero you know a selfless hero who whenever he can mentions that he didn't make these slanderous videos uh, with any personal gain in mind it's like the whole point of this is the the video is not monetized it's on a new account wait what do you mean that's a whole point you didn't say that like you know in the description of my video it says or in the intro too it says this is not monetized because if it's monetized then people think i'm just doing it for clout and money but you're doing it to expose the truth on woke media exactly Mm. But you're doing it to expose the truth on woke media. Exactly. This is textbook manipulation. Him saying he's not gaining anything out of these videos is extremely deceptive. He gained 700,000 loyal subscribers, collaborations with huge creators, which he's clearly trying to abuse, and it's all built on lies, deceit, and manipulation. If there is one person who gained anything from all this it's dogpack and purely out of principle i'm putting a mid-roll ad here here dogpack talks about how mr b scammed everyone by having people pay to get their memes sent to the moon the rocket exploding and them not offering refunds first of all people have shown proof of getting refunds even before the failed launch just because it took longer than expected second of all have you thought about a second launch? And as usual, I don't just have to take Dustin's word for it. The news article, which you put in your proof document, literally states the following. However, failure would not mean the end for S Robotic, which is the company Mr. Beast paid to carry a copy of the hard drive filled with the memes. It's certainly going to have some impact on our relationships and our ability to secure additional missions in the future. S Robotic already has a contract to fly another robotic lunar lander mission for NASA later this year. 
here. And this conveniently went unmentioned in your video. Three years later, the spaceship finally launched, carrying beautiful pictures of deceased loved ones to the moon where they would be immortalized. It fucking exploded. Side note here, Dogpack also uses another very manipulative tactic where he shows this stinky, dinky scrap metal rocket instantly exploding, uh, which made people believe that Mr. Beast was really trying to nickel and dime this entire space mission. While in reality, the actual spacecraft carrying the hard drive was a high quality Vulcan Centaur rocket made in collaboration with NASA as well as the ULA. Vulcan rocket launching a new era in spaceflight to the moon and beyond. Stinky dinky rocket. High quality spacecraft carrying the hard drive with memes from Mr. Beast. Dogpack's manipulation, reality. But, but Soggy, what about the insider knowledge he has from working there? In my opinion, as somebody who worked for Mr. Beast, it has been proven time and time again, he only worked there for 20 work days. As a new employee in like a 250 to 300 employee company, you're not gonna get much credible insider knowledge in 20 days. <laughs> But he also, but he also had anonymous text messages from ex-Mr. Beast employees. Well, see, I have two notes on that. One is that I feel like anonymous text messages can be used as tangible proof if either you have the receipts to back them up or you as a person can be trusted to not have faked or manipulated them. Which, uh, I don't think we can trust Dawson on that one. And two, even if those messages are from legitimate ex-Mr. Beast employees, they're wrong. <laughs> this text, for example, which Dogpack uses as a foundation for Mr. Beast rigging his challenges, according to them, uh, after a shift change in the 100 boys v girls video, no girls were eliminated when closing off their circles, so it was pretty much rigged, they think? Uh, okay. Love the lack of confidence in their own claims. And the lack of confidence makes sense. Because if you simply watch the 100 girls v boys video, you can clearly see a girl got eliminated during that part of the challenge. And in this behind the scenes video, you can even see how many cameras they had to make sure the challenge wasn't rigged. So we could constantly monitor it. This is the kind of stuff we don't normally show. We had to have six or seven people here monitoring every angle because if they just touch the red line, they're out. He also used this video as a prime example of Mr. Beast never using random subscribers subscribers, even though multiple people who can be identified by their nameplate can be proven to be random non-influencer contestants from outside of North Carolina. They are never random subscribers. If you subscribe, you will not win a million dollars. I subscribed to Mr. Beast and literally won a million dollars. Oh, that contestant had to get out for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. Yeah, Dawson because they were filling in for contestants who had COVID at the time. You can see Mr. B's girlfriend publicly talking about this in a podcast from years ago, by the way. I saw on your Twitter that you were mm. in the video 100 girls versus 100 boys for $500,000. Yes, that was an accident. On the day, everybody had to go for COVID tests and a lot of people came, got their COVID tests and they tested positive. Mm. And the girls somehow ended up with way too little contestants. So I got a call randomly from the studio and they're like, we need a female. What, you wanted them to let contestants with COVID participate in the challenge? And in this podcast, she also says that um, the contestants were informed beforehand that even if they lost, they'd still receive the $5,000 prize money. Which was the plot twist. Even if you leave, you get to keep the $5,000, oh. which makes it easier for people to leave the circle. Yeah. So the goal was, it was sort of a psychological test, really. And the people know that if they left, that they would still win? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that was the big plot twist, which I, I'm a huge fan of. So not only were you wrong on all accounts, this is probably the worst video you could have possibly tried building your case on that Mr. Beast challenges are rigged. And then your only other example of this accusation is the in 10 minutes this room will explode video. I want to show one more example. This is a real time video, meaning that time elapses the same in the video as it does in real life. And the timer is clearly added in post. Okay, uh, this is just getting embarrassing at this point, but you sent me this picture, Dawson. Uh, to see more credible by proving you were on the set of a video, and if you look closely at the picture that you took you'll notice that it's a set from the 10 minute video where you can see that the timer was in fact not added in post so you could assume that producers might be off camera with remote switches to trigger the flow of water assume my ass you didn't assume shit you're breaking your nda by spreading confidential info you knew from being on that set
And yes, I do give permission to anyone whose life got damaged by Dawson French to use my video against him in court. The producers might know how long it takes for the water to clear out of the room, so they can sort of decide on the fly how many turns of the valve it takes, or just when to trigger the water in general to make the results close. No, they did it for safety, as to not force someone to exert extreme force trying to turn valves underwater in a room submerged in water. Just like they replaced contestants who had COVID with employees because for safety reasons. A thing you so vehemently claim they lack at the company. Same with this video where a safety team forced the Mr. Beast crew off of their raft in the seven days stranded at sea video for about an hour because of this dangerous lightning storm. Wait, what was it you said again? You can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But you didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy. You slept on the production yacht. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You lied about them allegedly sleeping on a luxurious production yacht. No, they were forced to stay on a rusty barge for about an hour for their own safety and went back on their raft as soon as a life-threatening lightning storm passed. And here is video proof from the rusty barge. Wow! What a luxurious yacht! Now you can still argue about the fact that they went off of the raft, but I don't think it's faking a challenge when you're forced by your safety team to leave your raft once to get on a rusty barge for about an hour to sit out a life-threatening lightning storm to then get back on the raft as soon as possible, it's making sure people don't die. On one side you're preaching, the Mr. Beast company isn't safe enough. Wow. But then you use every single example of them actually implementing safety protocols against them as if they're doing it to rig challenges or not always use random subscribers do i really have to explain why they don't use complete strangers in challenges that include a man and a woman having to stay together in a small enclosed space for a hundred days pick a side dawson do you want them to fucking die for a challenge or do you want them to be saved guess why the 24 people in a circle for one million dollars video didn't get published which dawson insinuates was some elaborate scheme to force more people to buy shirts and then they'd run away with the profit. We're gonna have 24 yeah. people, we're gonna put them in 24 different circles, million dollars on the line, have some fun, you know what I'm saying? Also, this video never happened. There is no Mr. Beast video of 24 people in circles competing for a million dollars. So like, did they just pocket the money or what? Uh, well, again, it was because of peak COVID. And this time, I let a contestant who took part in that 24 people in the circle for one million dollar challenge explain what happened. I've heard that you were in the 24 people in a circle compete for one million dollar challenge. Um, yep. Can you talk a bit about how you were invited to that challenge? What kind of happened? Why it was never published? Mr. B started that 24 hour live stream where he was signing t-shirts and giving stuff away for that challenge. Mm -hmm. So I threw that on. I'm like, look, we'll just put this on in the background. We'll watch it the whole time. And he's giving away tickets. And I just kept blowing up the comment section. I didn't even buy a shirt. I won one of the invitations through the comment section on YouTube. Oh, for, for also, free as like a free participation, yeah. uh, no purchase necessary, I guess. Yeah, during like the height of COVID and everything, it was actually in November, we quarantined for two weeks. It was a super nice hotel, like, you know, two bedrooms, they'd bring meals to our room three times a day. It was good food, you know, just wanting to keep everybody safe and make sure that we're doing protocols the best the way that we could to to engage in this video we all covid tested did a giant circle there was 24 of us and right in the middle there's a million bucks and uh we competed for a few days all of a sudden in the middle of the night one of the subcontractors that worked for the team came in and kind of rushed the gun and didn't wait for his covid results and he tested positive positive. and uh jimmy came out and he's like guys i i hate i hate to do this but one of the guys on the crew has tested positive and I got to keep you all safe. So they canceled the video and they apologized. They sent us all home with 10 grand. That's an apology. After the new year in January or something like that, we actually got the call again that they were going to refilm this video. And they brought us all back out and they're like, it's not going to be a two week quarantine. We're going to do like a four or five day quarantine. And during that period of time, pretty much everybody got COVID, including myself. Like he's just like, I'm so sorry, but like we, we literally just, we can't do it because everybody's sick, but we'll make it up to you in the future. And again, even then he gave us like financial contributions to help. Did they split just like the $1 million over everyone? Exactly. Or? 
They just split exactly. the entire $1 million prize money over they every took, 24 contestants. They, they took the 1 million bucks and divided it through the 24. They gave you guys $1,240,000 in total, I guess. Um, to stay in a hotel room. Jesus Christ, you guys get the point that this guy is about as trustworthy as Richard Nixon during Watergate. And at this point, he has broken his NDA, committed serious defamation time and time again, and in the process harmed not just Mr. Beast, but also several other innocent people, who clearly mean nothing more to him than collateral damage. I'm actually surprised people don't want this guy sued, but hey, I'm no lawyer, so I don't know what's illegal. Uh, so I called one, <laughs> and what Dawson is doing is surely not legal. By now the results of an investigation done into the Mr. B LLC by an external third-party law firm have been shared and completely aligns with all of the evidence I found. Um, so if at this point you still choose to believe this guy, I kindly want to ask you to stop watching my video and continue putting crayons up your nose while uh, drooling mm. over Dogpack's face. Hey! What however is legal is the second illegal lottery. But almost any clip you do find will have some new violation of internet gambling or sweepstakes laws. Well, I, was, I thought it was him. I was like, keep going. <laughs> Wait, really? Let's go! Wait, it's literally like his like, initial. Who is it? My cousin. <laughs> Wait, really? Actually, that's illegal. Actually, that's not illegal. Only immediate family can partake in your sweepstakes and the cousin is not immediate family. It would have been illegal to exclude Chandler's cousin unless if specified in the rules of that specific giveaway. Uh, and your snippet isn't from those rules. It's from some lawyer's equivalent to Stack Overflow. So here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not, maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. And again, I'm not a lawyer, I think this is fraud. Maybe ask your immediate family, I mean, lawyer, next time. Cause your opinions are fucking stupid. It's completely legal and fine to use someone else's signature if they gave you formal consent to do so, and it doesn't devalue the signature. Months later, Mr. Beast signed shirts again, but this time it was a 24 hour live stream with way more illegal lotteries. Nope. Mr. Beast had no purchase necessary in the description, and even though they did say things like Would you guys prefer that we throw money in random orders, or that we throw items in random orders? Yeah. Somebody screamed in chat, I want to switch! Hey. Buy a shirt! If they ended up picking out of both free and paid entries for those giveaways behind the scenes, which there is no reason to believe they didn't, well, then that is legal in live streams. However, I do agree that it's very scummy and manipulative advertising in my opinion. Now, even though I have disproven most of these accusations, there's still a few that I have to investigate deeper. I mean, since Dogpack404 declined every interview offer, the only other place I could dig up the truth is in the belly of the beast. Oh man, North Carolina? Isn't that the boring part of the US? Oh well. Now, on my eight hour sleep deprived flight, I had a lot of time to think and watch Minions. And there was one question that just kept bugging me. Why did Dogpack commit such serious defamation and violate his NDA? Why risk your entire life just to spread lies about a YouTuber? So I went over everything I knew about Dogpack to try and figure out his motivation. I rewatched his first two job applications for Mr. Beast, which both got denied, and they seemed obsessive at best and pretentiously unprofessional at worst. I went over his personal Reddit account, that five head guy, which uh, for the geriatrics watching, Five Hat is hip internet lingo for when a person says something very smart, so uh, he's calling himself very smart, which is pretty pretentious and cringe. Now we're starting to see multiple patterns here. Hundreds of obsessive posts and comments on the Mr. Beast subreddit. New Mr. Beast interview just dropped. Feastable designs. Him being pretentious saying he would do shorts better than the current shorts team at Mr. Beast. Rants whenever people criticized his video IDs. Another third 15 minute long obsessive Mr. Beast Beast's job application where he goes into depth on viewer psychology, showcasing how aware he is of how every small piece of a video can be used to manipulate the viewer in one way or another. It now made sense why Dawson used the exact same content cop outfit as iDubs, or why he kept repeating his videos weren't monetized, or how he was able to frame and manipulate every lie as if it were the truth. It really all was viewer manipulation? This entire reddit account just seems like the online embodiment 
embodiment of an unhealthy Mr. Beast obsession. Um, so then I went over his erratic DMs to me where he threatened to slander me with nothing but false claims. Luckily when he did that I still had bulletproof receipts so Dawson had no choice but to back down. Nonetheless this once again proved to me how Dogback accuses and tries silencing people without any fact checking and completely tries warping the truth to push his personal agenda. So was he really just doing all this because his ego couldn't accept the fact that he got fired from his dream job after only three weeks at a YouTuber he was obsessed with? Maybe I'm gonna get some more answers at the Mr. Beast company, but for now, I'll just rewatch Minions for a third time. Hi, uh, Dustin Harris, you are the, well, rogue employee. Um, and I first of all wanted to ask you, uh, what you do at Mr. Beast, what your role is, and why you decided to reach out and yeah, correct some of the accusations that have been made. I worked for Jimmy almost six years, going on six years. I've been, I've been a writer, director, producer, production coordinator, an assistant, executive assistant, uh, head of production, head of creative, head of construction, you name it. I've done everything that I can do in this company mm -hmm. and not just to see people slander the work that you've done, but to know that it's lies and misinformation will make anybody speak up, to mm -hmm. be honest. Hi, Emily. Um, you worked at Mr. Beast. Can you tell me how long you've been working there? I've been working there for shortly over a year, as of like four days ago. I'm the ideation strategist right now, ideation gener generator, coordinator, so okay. that's my official title. If I remember correctly, that is also where Dawson worked, or yes. for the internet, Dogpack 404 yes. worked, yeah. So he worked closely together with you. Yeah, uh, okay. it was me and him in the department for about two weeks. It was just the two of us, and Hoodie was overseeing us. Everybody calls me Hoodie because all I did back, back in the day, eight years ago, was run my own YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Hoodie. I got to work all over in different departments. I've been in creative, I've been in ideation right now as far as thumbnail. When you're saying ideation manager, um, I guess then you were the manager of Dawson or Dogpack 404. I, I was the manager of Dogpack 404 for a time being. <laughs> I've heard some stories of people feeling kind of off when he was hired. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering why did you hire him? I didn't hire that guy. Oh, no, you... I, I inherited that man. Oh, okay, you didn't, okay, how did that come to be then? You want to know, so the real yeah. thing that actually happened was he applied to Beast while I was still the creative manager. He applied to Beast okay. twice, and I saw his interview and went, hmm, interesting, he's got an analytical brain. Yeah. Ah, that's not creative. Like, what he's talking about just won't fit what we're trying to do with our videos. Mm -hmm. So I turned him down the first time. Okay. And then he okay. applies a second time a couple months later. To ideation, I guess. Still the creative. Oh, okay. okay. And I'm like, nah, this guy's still like, he's he's got like an interesting mind, but I just, I don't know. I think he'd probably fit somewhere else in like a different department or a different channel. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. knows? He's clearly smart, but nah, I'm good. Yeah. I don't know what happened. A void opened up, something random happened. He spawned in on the channel, just randomly in ideation. <laughs> I got summoned into a room and got told by our leaders, they're like, hey, there's a gap in ideation and thumbnail. I need somebody to go in there and help. Can you be that guy? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll go in. Okay. And I went in and that's, uh, that's the first time I met Dawson. Dawson sent me a screenshot of uh, messages he had between mm -hmm. you and him. Um, can you just verify that these are real? These are? Yes, yeah, those messages, messages are between me and Dawson. Okay, yeah. okay. Can you tell me a bit about your relationship with Dawson during both of you guys working there? Was there something that felt off? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, me and Dawson were cordial, like I tried to keep it professional. I think he tried his best to keep it professional, mm -hmm. but I will say it was a little uncomfortable with just me and him in the office. He seemed pretty disinterested mm -hmm. in making genuine connections with people at the company. He gave weird vibes for sure. Yeah. And I, I felt like very uncomfortable working in the office with him. He didn't seem to work too well with others. Okay. It seemed like he had no respect for Hoodie. Um, he didn't take any of Hoodie's advice. It seemed like he didn't think he knew what Hoodie was doing. But yeah, Dawson definitely did, did not like respect. Hoodie. Yeah. yeah, did not like Hoodie, did not show him any respect, even though he was his superior and he was trying to train him into being a better ideation strategist. 
so uh, there was a leaked document um, <laughs> uh, yeah about uh, like work culture mm -hmm. and uh, there was a line in there no it doesn't mean no and it has a pretty negative connotation and I was wondering uh, because you know you as, as a woman working at, at Beast um, what was your reaction when when reading that that no, it doesn't mean no thing. And, yeah, yeah, so I actually wrote that part. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why it's funny. Yeah, because I actually wrote this thing with Jimmy doing this. The whole reason why this thing exists in the first place is because mm. we are growing so fast people wise. It's like, okay, how do we give them artificial Jimmy time? Like, how do we teach them what CTR is, teach them what one out of 10 is? Yeah. Like, how do you say, okay, this is how we think about creative. This is how it take what it takes to be successful here, mm. you know, based off of the hard things we got to do. That's the intent behind the document, right? Yeah. No doesn't mean no is wildly taken out of context. I think in this situation, because mm in the way that we mean it it's it's a sales tactic it's like again like i mentioned like you call a crane operator and go hey man i need you to drop a jet from your crane and they're like huh no i can't do that right and so for us it's more like well why can't you do that and they're like oh well i don't have the manpower to do this and it's mm -hmm. like okay well how do we help you get past that right yeah. can we help get you more labor is it like a that's what it means because like we wouldn't have a company if we stopped at no at face value yeah right because if everybody that told us no we couldn't do some some of the crazy things that we've done it yeah. in no sense of the word in the context means like as a female, if somebody comes up to me and says an imperfect comment, like okay. they keep trying, like, okay. like not at all. Okay. You know Cause I mean? that was like, kind of concerning, I guess. But well, yeah, yeah like not at all, yeah, like yeah. not at all. Okay. Like in any sense of the word, it's like, yeah. no, like that's, it's mm -hmm. a sales tactic. It's yeah. been around long before, like we put it down on paper. The truth well, of the matter is we were four and a half weeks out of that video and we didn't have a hole or a train. And uh, I don't know if you know anything about digging dirt, but it takes a long time to dig a hole that yeah. deep. Um, and the location we ended up shooting it at is happens to be a close personal friend of mine and ha just happened to have a 50 foot deep quarry that was already dug. And the creative behind the video was that it was an 80 foot hole. So I had to get it dug another 30 feet in four weeks, which that much limestone is a lot to do. Um, so we hired a massive excavating team to come out and dig the other 30 feet out. And then um, the reason that the hole is CG'd in the video is mm -hmm. because of safety, right? We needed to create a back wall mm -hmm. that the train wouldn't crash into and potentially kill people. Uh, so the hole is a little bit bigger than the video yeah. that we, we put lifts and cameras on that were far enough away that the train wouldn't hit them and no one would die, mm -hmm. right? So it was all a safety concern. It was not yeah. about faking a hole at all. War crime stuff, that was a joke. Why did you make that joke? Um, I didn't work on that video. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was obviously, I was in the company at the time. I was working on a separate project and I got a call and, and they were like, hey, Jake's not doing so hot. Mm -hmm. And so I came in and, uh, and the assessment was accurate. He was not doing so hot. Okay. I, you know, I just yeah. kind of like, I was talking to him. I was trying to cheer him up. And, mm -hmm. and I made that joke. It's a war crime. I didn't think it was going to turn into a bunch of thumbnails and titles on YouTube, but <laughs> yeah, it you know, like it was serious. I mean, it was obviously a joke, kind of. It was definitely framed a little more maliciously. Yeah, in the they video. Didn't, they didn't insinuate it as a joke in the video. They yeah. didn't show like the the war crime, like definition of war crimes, while it's being said. Which uh, can you talk a bit about, like, since you were friends with Jake Well, did he talk about it afterwards, or do you know, like? how it came to be that he had such a rough time in that challenge, in that isolation challenge. Again, I didn't work on the video, so all mm -hmm. I can do is, I can kind of speculate. So yeah. I'll answer you by saying the process we normally go through when we cast. We usually find someone who we think is gonna be good for a video, and we usually work with them leading up to the video, letting them know not exactly the challenges that we're gonna be doing, but round about the level of difficulty that the challenges are gonna be, and then we kind of lay out the challenge, right? Mm -hmm. We've yeah. never really had that issue up to that point, and we haven't ever had that issue since that point. You know, we've mm -hmm. even done, we've done videos like um, the Trap Together video that if that had really really similar aspects to the video Jake was in, and they had a positive experience after mm -hmm. the fact. I mean, it was a tough challenge for them, but they released these yeah. videos after the fact. Now, that doesn't take away the way that Jake felt in that video, and I would never do that. You know, yeah. I saw the guy; he was not doing so hot. You mm -hmm. know, and I don't, I don't know what happened in there specifically to make that happen. I don't, yeah. you know, I know Jake, 
I he's not lying when he when he said he had a bad time. You know, say so I don't I don't want to I don't want to say that uh, it was 100% Jake is the reason that, that challenge didn't turn out the way that it was yeah. supposed to turn out. Some people approach challenges just completely different, and mm -hmm. that's the thing is. My brain tells me that if other people have gone through similar challenges and they've turned out okay, then maybe it's not the challenge. And I'm not the type of person that holds grudges. And I know I still work here now, and I know he's still making videos, and I know people, like, I have friends that are like, I can't believe you're still talking to Jake Weddle. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, in 10 years, none of this is going to matter between him and I. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll have a beer together. Mm -hmm. Because it's, in the grand scheme of things, my friendship with him is more important more, than anything yeah. anybody's going to say online. When he spoke out, I know what he ran into as well. Mm -hmm. I know he ran into people that sent him hate. I know he ran into people that were sending him death threats. I know that he got doxxed. I know his phone number got leaked. And yeah. in that scenario, you know, as messed up as it sounds, like, he couldn't really turn to any of his friends at Beast because he had kind of just... You yeah, know, it would be he, kind of a conflict. Kind of just yeah. upset everyone at Beast. Yeah. So, I mean, like, who does he have to turn to? He has to turn towards Rosanna and Dog Pack and yeah. all the people that are making these videos about us. I mean, I think he found a, a family and he found a home. I don't fault the guy for sticking with that little group of people making videos. Like, yeah. It just makes sense. So, something I also want to ask you about is about Lokoya Hill. And um, there was some mismanagement uh, from him towards his uh, assistant. Uh, there are some allegations out there, but nothing concrete so far. And uh, yeah, can you tell me a bit about what really went on with Lakoya Hill? Yeah, so like uh, just to kind of give you background on like when someone reports something to HR, which would, like would have been me at the time because mm. it was years ago. Yeah. Uh, whenever somebody reports it, I go, hey, okay, like. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to make sure that we do everything we can to look into it. Then we mm -hmm. always hire a third party uh, company, either a lawyer or someone that's like not here to like prove one person right or wrong, yeah, but like, like a unbiased true party. unbiased party. Yeah, and so then sense. like everybody talks to him, like the person, his assistant would have talked to them. LaCoya would have talked to them mm -hmm. and any person that they named as witnesses or potential proof of text messages, like pictures, anything like this mm. company would have dealt with. And then they write a report and then they go, hey, here's what you should do, okay. right? And so that's what they do. And then internally what we do is like, okay, the assistant, like what do you want to happen, right? Mm. If it's if it's this, if it's that, like obviously if it's found like he's gone, like that's not okay in any workplace, yeah, yeah. you know? If it's like confirmed that there confirmed. is something, yeah, yeah, like, yeah then. Yeah. Like, of course, like, yeah, no, we're not going to hang on to yeah. that, right? And so, um, and he's like, yeah, I don't necessarily want him to be fired, but, like, I don't want to be around him. I don't want to see him. Like, it's mm -hmm. just really uncomfortable for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, great. So, like, I actually worked with him to come up with a list of, like, jobs that he wanted. Because, again, if the person who he's assisting is not here, like, it's like, okay, well, now what's what your job? Do, like, yeah. So it was like we came up mm -hmm. with everything he was interested in, like what he wanted to do and stuff like that, and move him into a different role. And we said, hey, you won't have to see LaCoya again. We're going to, like, move him completely out. It wasn't a secret. Like, we moved him to a new company idea that we had. He was the only person in that company. Nope. He wasn't even on site. He wasn't working in the building. He wasn't anything like that. Like, mm -hmm. we just said, hey, we, we think this is a cool idea. Go figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so he went on his own to go figure that out. Um, and then the assistant worked with us for a long time. And then we, when he wasn't here anymore, I think it was, like, almost a year after the assistant, like, had, you know, chosen to do whatever he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Then we were like, okay, we'll bring LaCoya back to help because at this point there's we no had, conflict anymore. there's no conflict anymore so that's really what it was like it was no oh we're gonna go hide LaCoya over here and like I mean even now LaCoya doesn't work for us anymore most of the time he was there was consumed in trying to get an Apple Vision Pro any weird stories circulating or whatever of something Dawson did at the company or I heard that he told the chef that his food was trash. I heard that yeah. story too, yeah. yeah. And then he Which, like denied it in a yeah. video afterwards and I talked about yeah. that, but. I'm yeah, not sure so. how much truth there is to that, but I mean, maybe we could call him and see like. Hey, this is Emily from Ideation. Hey Emily, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right. Cool, well I'm here with Soggy. I wanted to ask you, I have a question to ask you about Dawson, but I wanna make sure you're comfortable being recorded first. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So I heard a rumor circulating that Dawson told you that your food was trash. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> um, 
yeah, I mean, it was it was the first time I actually met him. Uh, it was kind of after his tour, um, you know, of our studio and such. And he actually came over, um, you know, tried some of the food that we had in the fridge mm-hmm. uh, and then proceeded to tell me it tasted like shit and that he wishes that we were cater more frequently. Wow. Uh, because, yeah, which is fairly interesting because I'm not sure if I had introduced myself or maybe <laughs> he just felt comfortable enough to tell me the food tasted like shit. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but that's kind of how it went, my friend first interaction with him and then um other than that i really had no other interaction or wanting to have any other interaction yeah. with him after that yeah that's unfortunate um i'm really sorry to hear that but i disagree i think your food is great <laughs> thank you so much I mean, I like- recently there was this video that started getting some traction one of the clinics where uh, some of the eye surgeries were happening and uh, uh helping 1000 people see for the first time mm-hmm. um and they claimed that the Mr. Beast company hadn't paid for any of the surgeries yet. Can you talk a bit about that? Um, essentially, when we did that video, we, we worked with a uh, third party. Mm-hmm. And that third party worked with a bunch of different organizations all around the world because we were trying to spread it as far as we could, multiple countries. Yeah. So we had one center third party that we were working with, and they kind of worked with all these. One of those organizations somewhere around the world uh, didn't receive the compensation, mm-hmm. which we only worked with the third party. We paid them for 1,800 surgeries. Oh, 1,800, uh, so another 1,000. Yeah. Uh, we kept going after 1,000. We just worked with them. And okay. Just, we actually, yeah, we did more than 1,000, but okay. the, the title of 1,000 <laughs> sounds a lot better. So we just says 1,000, yeah. and it looks good. Yeah. So we worked with that third party, and that third party, I don't know what communication error happened between them and mm-hmm. the uh, other organization, but some way or another, that organization ended up not being funded properly. Okay. And then when it came across our desk that the missing loop happened, we just went around the third party we were going to uh, work with to compensate them. Yeah. And they've put out a video since okay. talking about it. We're doing a video where we're trying to help people walking. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah. Actively partners have pulled out because of these videos. There are people who will not walk or will have to delay in them walking because of the videos that Dogpack made. That was Unironically, yeah. like I was okay. getting pitched ideas like Jimmy trying every drug in existence. That was also like yeah. a serious uh, ID that he had. Yeah, I choke. It, it again goes back to like the, no, 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 I'm joking, I'm joking. Because yeah. if I pitch you an idea of like Jimmy tries every drug and you're like, that's sick, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's uh, sick. Yeah, but if I would go like, huh, that's kind of weird. I'd be like, like whoa, oh, it's a joke. Whoa, yeah, you're yeah, taking yeah. that weird. I was yeah. just putting that in as a joke. Like, yeah. that's crazy. How in depth he went on like how viewer psychology works. So he obviously knows how like every part of a video can can manipulate the viewer in some way or form. And you can see mm-hmm. that both by that video he made to apply at the Mr. Beast channel, but also you can see that just in the videos he made. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the Mr. Beast, the fraud videos and stuff. He accuses the Mr. Beast company of um, really trying to psychologically target children and like manipulate children. Is there any truth to that in the ideation team? And like, um, did, did he try to bring his like skills of a viewer psychology into ideation? Did he try to do yes. that? Yes, yes to that. Yes to trying to bring his skills of viewer psychology into ideation and also yeah. trying to like bleed it over to, cre- uh, to creative. Yeah. So that way we could figure out like, okay, well, you know, psychologically a near miss is going to be the craziest thing that we could do here. We should do that, which he has on his like mural boards where it's like the exact things that he calls Jimmy out for. If he was here for longer than a month, he would know that we were actively working at aging up our content Mm -hmm. because that was something that we were like very cognizant of is, hey, we should make our content something that is appealing and enjoyable to like people who are older. Like who are the people that aren't watching our videos? probably 30 to 40 to 50 to even 60 year olds. Mm -hmm. How do we make our videos enjoyable for those guys? So we're hitting a general audience. Now you could argue, yeah, a general audience. I mean, we need to make a video that like a 10 year old and a 90 year old can understand, which is the same for the challenges that we have to do in videos like that anyways. When we do a video like ages one to 100, fight for blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We have to make a challenge so simple to understand and easy to process that a literal one year old and a 99 to 100 year old can understand. understand. Yeah. Like we need to keep that in mind. Yeah. That's just generalizing. <sighs> I went all the way from America and back and all I got to show for it is this ugly plushie and this fart gun from Minions.
and uh, the interviews I uh, held, by the way, which did clarify a lot. I think I personally finally realized how big of a company and how many people actually work at Mr. Beast. It's not like a small 10 people thing as it was a few years ago. And I'm glad that the interviews clarified Jake Weddle's experience and, and didn't end up invalidating his personal perspective, but did add some context that it might have not been the challenge that was terrible, but he himself wasn't mentally in the best state in life uh, at that point. But there is one more thing I have to clarify for everyone, and that is the illegal lottery number one. Which, on my flight back, I finally found some proof that the first illegal lottery was in fact illegal. There was no no purchase necessary in the description, no mention of it at all. Um, yeah, it, it was illegal. And personally, Jimmy has to own up for it. Uh, either by donating the amount of profit he made in that live stream to a charity, or by refunding everyone who bought a shirt in that stream, but that's like so many years ago, so I don't know if that's a possibility. Or do a giveaway live stream where everything is given away for free, with no merch sales attached. However, I do also want to note that most YouTubers, including me, didn't know that you could do something like an illegal lottery. Um, so since only the first one was illegal, I feel like it might have been a mistake. I don't know. I can't say that for sure. Just as the question if Mr. Beast is evil isn't for me to say, but that is again for you, the viewer, to decide. Because there is some shit that he should be criticized for and has to be looked into. I know CoffeeZilla is doing an investigation into his crypto stuff, and once that releases, I hope that clarifies some things. Because those are some serious allegations. And that wasn't of like stupid adolescent Jimmy, 19 years old, and hiring someone without doing background checks that was like three years ago way more recent that he should be held accountable for if he did commit crimes with crypto so yeah go check off Izilla's video on that once it releases i couldn't really investigate the crypto stuff because i don't know shit about crypto and i didn't want to be hypocritical like dog back and talk about shit i don't know anything about because that's basically what dawson has been doing for the past few months i feel like jimmy has to become way more transparent because that is how he got in all this trouble in the first place they really have to start a Mr. Beast behind the scenes channel to upload behind the scenes footage there and stop with the deceptive shit when you do a sponsor read don't make the yellow bar go real fast at the start to make the viewer believe that, you know, oh, this advertisement isn't gonna take long, I won't skip over it. But then at the end of it, make the visual timer suddenly run way slower. That's not just deceptive, I think that's pretty disrespectful towards your audience. And I know that there are still questions that you guys probably have with stuff that I just couldn't address because there is so much, but... I can forward you to some other people who have talked about stuff that I might have forgotten in this video. You know, if you want to know some more about Beast Games and the Beast Games lawsuit, definitely check out Stucky's channel. He did a great deep dive on that and I made many other videos on the whole dog pack Mr. Beast situation. And again, once CoffeeZilla's investigation on the crypto stuff is out there, I highly recommend you to go watch that because that'll clarify a lot of stuff that I don't know anything about. Because I trust those investigative creators 10,000 times more than I do Dawson. Instead of having competent people investigate serious accusations, he's just been throwing baseless shit at the wall and hoping some stuff sticks with the audience. He is incompetent, petty, a liar, deceptive, and after all this, I just know that he is a disgruntled employee. I've been investigating this for like the past three months and I really hope that I was able to answer some questions you guys had before watching this video. Also Jimmy, stop the collabs with Logan Paul. If you want to see some more of my interviews or some extra additional context that I have but wasn't able to put in this video, let me know in the comments below. I might talk about it on my socials so make sure to check those out in the description as well as maybe post some stuff on my second channel so make sure to check that out as well. Thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for joining my cereal bowl so I can absorb all of your fibers and nutrients. And I hope that the Mr. Beast drama is finally over now because at this point I'm sick and tired of it.